Hi friends, welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Davine and I homeschool four kids ages 10, 11, 11, and 14. So today you get glasses, Davine. I didn't feel like putting in contacts today, so got my glasses on. But um, today I'm going to be sharing our term two morning basket, what we've had in it, how it's been going. I'll be giving like short reviews on what we've been using so far in this second term. We do three terms in our homeschool, each is 12 weeks long, so this would be the conclusion of our 24th week of school. So these next two weeks are going to be sort of a special treat. I'm going to be putting out two videos a week instead of my normal one. I'm going to be doing my term two updates. So today I'm going to be talking about my morning basket, my Bible, my Chinese, and my Michael Clay Thompson language arts. Later this week, you will see my group subjects or family subjects. So that's history, science, and geography. Then next week, you're going to see my fourth and fifth graders, independent work, or the things that they do more on their level. And then you will see my sixth and seventh graders, independent work and stuff they do more on their level. So if you like videos like this, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you wanna see when those videos are up. Before I get too far into this, I'm going to let you know that I will link in the description box below a link to everything that I mentioned here, anything that I can find. So if you're interested in checking any of those out, I would be super grateful if you used my link. Some of them are affiliate links and some are not, just depending on the resource. But if you do use an affiliate link, that does help support this channel and I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna first show you my morning basket. It is right over here. It is actually a cart. As you can see, if you've been here before, you know how that works. And so I have on the top here, this is sort of my morning basket area. And I'm going to be just going through it. In my morning basket, uh, we have things like read alouds and then a whole bunch of little things. And I'm going to include my Bible curriculum here as well as language and some of the Michael Clay Thompson sort of stuff. So I'm just going to do a general review with these things that I have here. And I'm just gonna go in order from what I have here lined up. So the first thing that I have right here is this one here and you'll see my little checklist. This is something that I do to make it so that I don't have to open up guides. I can just type up what we're doing each day and then I just check off as we go. But this is We Sing America. It is basically uh, <clears throat> American songs and it comes with a CD. And so I use my favorite little CD player here to play the songs. We probably do this twice a week and we are almost done with this. This came with our Bookshark D and E condensed. So that's one of the things that we do just every other day. If you've been around here a while, you will notice that I don't do things as scheduled in most of my curriculum. I kind of mix and match and do things in a way that works for us. So we're almost done this, even though we're probably not even halfway through D and E, but then we mush it with other things. So, so next we have this here. It lost its cover at some point. Let's see. It is American Tall Tales by Mary Pope Osborne. She's the one that writes the Magic Tree House books, but basically it's just a bunch of American tales. And so it's been interesting because it is just American tall tales sort of things. And we've just had it in our morning basket probably since the beginning of term two. I got it out. We are, looks like about two thirds of the way through. Most of the things in this basket, I'll tell you how often we do it if we do it more often than every week or two. We kind of go in a loop. So I will usually do some things I'll do like Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday. So things like this, I would sort of do every, I believe it's Tuesday and Thursday. And then some of these other things, we just have a loop. And so we rotate through the loop. We might do one or two of the things each day. So it usually takes about a, two weeks to get through our whole loop. Next, I have two books here. We have A Drop of Water and Pagu. We have been using this all year. And I've been using Ambleside online schedule. I printed it off. I just have this little thing that tells me what to read each time. Looks like we are on chapter 10 or week 10. 
So we are not probably even halfway through this. So I will probably have to speed this up just to make sure we finish it this year. But if you haven't seen this book, it is really fun. We only read like a page each time we do it. And it's all about different aspects of water. And the kids have found it quite interesting. There's sometimes different experiments and it's just very beautiful. I believe that um, Walter Wick does a lot of books like this, different, different things that are kind of sciencey. And then we have Hauling Clancy Hauling's Pagu, and we are also doing Hauling Clancy Hauling for our geography. So if you wanna see the books that we're working on for those, stick around to the next video. But it's a lot of fun. They have very beautiful pictures, it looks the pages like that. And we're learning about a hermit crab's life from the very beginning to, I don't know, we haven't gotten to it yet, but just the life of a hermit crab and we're learning a lot of ocean facts and stuff like that. So this is something, these two things I picked up maybe my first year of homeschooling and I'm on my third year and I'm just starting to get around to it now, but it's been fun, we've been enjoying it and as you can see, we've been going very slow. We've been working on this all year and we're still working on it. Next I have the Tuttle Twins, we are on book 11. There are 13 of these small books. They are for, I would say, kind of the mid elementary to upper elementary ages. Um, so my kids are just about right on mark, a little bit on the older side. These have been fun, we have enjoyed them. I'm not exactly sure, I do like a lot of what it says. Sometimes, sometimes it's a little bit much for me. Um, it's very libertarian, um, free market, things like that. So a lot of really great concepts and I do like them and we are having some good discussions, but I'm not like 100% sold. So I think you would have to do your research and see if Tuttle Twins would be something that would work in your homeschool. We enjoyed it and I actually did get the middle, I think the middle school grade there's a few books that I picked up for next year. So I guess I committed to doing some more with this company, but I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of people who have done reviews on these. So I would definitely go check those out if you're wondering more about these. So this one, I'm, what is this one about? Oh, I haven't read, the, we haven't read this one yet. So this is the next one. So I don't know what this one is about. So here are all the ones that we have read. I will say that my children do love to reread these books. They're very easy reads. That is what we've done so far this year. And they've been enjoying them. I just put them on the shelf once I've read it to them. And they do like to pick these up very frequently and read them. Next, if you've been around a while, you have seen these. Same Mad Libs we've been working on since last year. I think we're done. I think we have one more to do. My kids will be sad once that's over. I don't think I'm going to get more for this year just because I want to get through all the things that we have in our morning basket. So it's been fun. I do recommend picking some Mad Libs up sticking them in your morning basket every once in a while. And yeah, the kids really enjoy it. All right, next, next I have my placeholder for Word Up. Um, so Word Up is by Compass Classroom. It is a middle school vocabulary. It's Latin and Greek roots, kind of a show. They put on a show. Um, it's, it is a lot of fun. The kids do really enjoy it. We're doing it very casually. They do have the videos and then they do have worksheets and tests, I believe. And we're just watching, we're just watching the videos and I'm hoping the kids will pick up a few words. I am considering using it when my kids are in high school as part of a high school credit. Maybe they can do it again, do the worksheets, do the quizzes and really just solidify those words. But for now, we're just doing it as a part of our morning basket and all the kids are enjoying, they're enjoying it. So there are, I think, 12 episodes per level, and we just started level two. So like I said, it's about every two weeks that we get through one rotation of the things in this morning basket. So next we have this Usborns All About Feelings. So we've been going through this, and my kids do, do enjoy our, what we're doing, social, emotional type things this year. They do enjoy it. It is a little bit on the younger side, I would say, for kids my age, so we're at... 10 to 14, so closer to the 10, 10 year olds and under, I would say, but we've been enjoying it. Um, Esborn has several ones. We have All About Feelings, and then I think there's one 
we have several that we're working on. So if you want to see all of them, I do have a video that talks about all of the ones we're using this year. And you can go look at my old morning basket videos if you want to see what we were doing before this book. Next, we're back to Among the Farmyard People by Clara D. Pearson. Once again, we continue to enjoy her stories. It's very Charlotte Mason. It is written more in an old English style, but my kids do really enjoy it. There are some pictures. Let's see if I can find one. There's a few pictures in there, but it's just a really fun way to learn facts about animals. And when I did my survey with my kids, like what they enjoyed this year and what they don't like and sort of different things that they like, um, a few kids did mention the, these books. So I think we'll probably continue. I still have maybe two more. I purchased a series of five. It takes us a whole year to get through these because we just do it in our morning basket. You can see we are about two thirds of the way through. So I guess that's about right on track to finish it this year. Each story is about a different animal, in this case, in the farmyard. And we're learning just different characteristics and traits and just ways that animals are using these fun stories in her books. So I do recommend those. I have recommended them every time I've done one of these morning baskets since I first started doing these morning basket videos. All right, so this is something we've had on and off in our morning basket since our very first year of homeschooling. I picked these up from The Good and the Beautiful. They have five levels and it's called vintage drawing. And basically this is the third level. They teach them how to draw. And my daughter's really excited about this third level because she's like, oh, there's shading now. So there's a little bit of shading in here, but it's just step by step shows the child how to draw things. I find this very good for both spectrums of my children, from the ones that are artistic to the ones that really struggle with drawing. Just learning to pay close attention for those ones that struggle, they have improved in the way that they are able to copy these. So my struggling fine motor skills kids have benefited from this as well as my more artistic children. So yeah, it's been fun. Uh, we just purchased level three because we have finished one and two. And so what we do is we have level one, we had level one and two out and the ones that were better at drawing, they could do both level one and two. I ba basically just open, open it to one page for each one. And so my more artistic children would do four drawings basically. And then the one that struggled a little more would just do the level one, the two pictures there. And now we have level, we're gonna put out level two and three and we'll just see how that goes. So next we have poetry. And so this is a child's introduction to poetry. We probably started this, this term as well. We are about one third of the way through. I don't know if we'll finish this this year, probably not. And if not, we'll just keep continuing with that. It does come with a CD. I took it out. Um, I have it just with my other CDs right now. But this one is this one is fun. They go through different types of poetry. So, for example, there's this one, um, the I'm not, Villanelle, Vin, Vin, Villanelli, just the villain. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how to say that. But it talks a little bit about that style of poetry, and it just gives some examples of the poetry. And then here we go. Um, the CDs will read the poetry to my kids, so that is fun. We just recently did the haiku. So there's a lesson on the, the haiku, and then there's a bunch of examples of a, a haiku. And then next we're going, we're going to be doing narrative verse. So it's a fun, I would say, introduction to poetry. It talks about just different styles. So yeah, we have enjoyed this poetry in our homeschool. So I'm just now looking for our read aloud to show you the cover, and I can't. My daughter borrowed it. So it is called Carry On Mr. Bowditch, and so far we are enjoying it. I usually have that in my morning basket. And now we're at the parts, we have the Bible and Chinese and language arts, the Michael Clay Thompson language arts. So for Bible, I don't like to do the same thing every day. So I have two Bible programs going on right now. The first one is Sunlight B and C's reading for the year. So here is my binder with that. We have finished most of what is in B and C, however, we didn't finish the Bible portion and I don't like things to go to waste. And it's just a reading plan really. So what I have is, I have, like you saw on the other sheet, I have typed up sort of 
I typed up the verses that we're going to be doing, and they do include a CD for memorizing verses. So I just type it up, I say what we're doing, and then when we start a new verse, it'll say what the verse is and then the track number. So we do this like twice a week. We sing the verse and we read from the Bible, whatever it says to read here. So we've been doing that, like I said, about twice a week. And then our other Bible has been this here, Apologias, Who is God? And we have, I think we've enjoyed it. I did say in a former video that it's not super our style. It is more textbooky than we usually enjoy. I feel like the notebooks for this have really helped us to be able to continue with this. I really think that if we only had this textbook, we, I would not be still finishing this, but the notebooks really help to just add some more interest into this. And let's see, looks like I am about, I don't know, three fourths of the way through. So I'm pretty sure I will finish this. And I was debating on buying the next level. I probably would have had my finances not told me no, but now that I didn't purchase it, I'm really glad that we didn't I just be able to think about this clearer. It's not exactly our style, so I don't think we'll continue on with this. Going back to sunlight, as you can see from here, we have two left. <laughs> and then we will be done this sunlight B and C Bible reading plan. So we are going to pick up a not consumed Bible study. Those are something we've really enjoyed in the past. I think we've done maybe two at this point. I tend to do about one a year. I do. I did purchase a packet, so I have like five of them. So what I did was, I think I have four, actually more than five. I had my kids vote on the last four to see which one they wanted to do. So they voted on Obey. So we're going to be doing a Bible study on obedience and we're going to start that in the place of our sunlight reading once we run out of readings for that. And then we'll just continue on the every other day. We'll be doing the who is God until that is out. And then we'll figure out what we do till the end of the year. Next for Mandarin Chinese, we do that about twice a week. And we've been doing that since our first year of homeschool. I won't say that my kids are fluent at any of it in general, but they are learning. I can tell that they're learning different vocabulary. I use a number of different resources. First of all, I have like a checklist that I created at the beginning of the year. I will link the video below on how I created sort of a system to go through. So I don't have to plan, I don't have to plan Chinese. It's just goes through a rotation. So generally we'll go through, we have this Chinese made easy for kids level one. We will do one lesson in here. So that's about eight pages. Looks like this. So we go through that. I don't have the CD for this. And I don't know if this is, I don't think this is readily available. I had to purchase used and I couldn't find the CD. So there are parts that we have to skip because they don't have the CD. But I do know a lot of Mandarin, so I'm able to teach this. So we usually go through that first. And then I got, we have a workbook here that we go through. So the kids just do some activities in there. I just do as much as we can do in about 20 minutes. Every lesson is about 20 minutes long. And then we have this one here, which is much more readily available. This has CDs, it has songs. So you learn vocabulary through songs. So I have that sort of matched up on here. I try to do the themes, try to match up the themes. I have some really great Chinese readers that I've had since my, my daughter was really young. So we read like one of those each week and then we practice the ones we've done before. And then I have a bunch of flashcards, Chinese flashcards. And I do have a poster here up on the wall that you will see in most of my videos. And that is titled Chinese flashcards. So, so that's something that we have been using probably since the first year as well. Each year, I just kind of look at the resources that I have or see what I want to pick up for that school year to teach that subject. So that's how we've been doing Mandarin Chinese this term. Finally, let's talk Michael Clay Thompson language arts. We have been doing level one, the island level this year. We are done the island level, what we purchased anyways. I got the grammar island, I got sentence island, I got practice island. I did not get their poetry and their literature. So we have been working on this term, mostly sentence island, which is part two after grammar island. And it is a story about mud, 
and he goes on a mother fish who goes on land and he learns all about sentences and it's kind of a fun little story he runs into a whole bunch of different characters and they teach him different aspects about the sentence so pretty fun literature based way to learn about sentences the different types of sentences what are important pieces of a sentence subject predicate making sentences clear things like that and then during grammar island and now sentence island we have been doing practice island which is basically there will be a sentence and the kids have these with blanks down here there's a sentence and you will go through and you will put the parts of speech the parts of a sentence are the prepositions what sort of clauses are them what sort of clauses are they what sort of sentences are they so declarative interrogative things like that so we are probably around halfway through maybe a little more than halfway through this and we just do two every time we did the lesson we did a lesson twice a week maybe 20 minute lessons and we would just go through together i would use this board and i would write down the answers as the kids told me and basically we do two every time and now that we're finished sentence island i'm just giving that to them as their independent work so they will be doing one sentence every once in a while or the girls will be doing two sentences every once in a while on their own so hopefully they're able to do that on their own now that we've practiced it about 55 times this year so that is michael clay thompson we are not going to continue with that next year i'm just going to go with the independent independent work, more independent style for language arts next year. But we did enjoy it. It was fun for us to do something together like that. And yeah, that is my morning basket. That is my morning subjects, Bible, Chinese, language arts, and all the other random stuff in my morning basket. I hope that was helpful in just to be able to see what's inside my morning basket and what I've enjoyed. So I would love to know, what are you guys doing? Do you have a morning basket? If you do, what do you have in your morning basket or what are your favorite things to do in your morning basket? I'm sure that all of us would love to know what's working for you during this term or this past few months for morning basket, Bible, things like that, subjects that you might do together that you have been enjoying. So share with us in the comments below. Thank you so much for coming today and I hope to see you in my next video. Goodbye everyone. Today's video is brought to you by Calm in the Chaos Prints, my Etsy shop. I am going to be having a 30% off sale from March 10th to the 27th of this year, 2023, getting ready for homeschool sale. I will have all my homeschool planners on sale as well as these kids visual charts. So these are some of my most popular planners. I'm just gonna give you a look here. It is based on a Charlotte Mason type style. So there's some things like that, but you see, as you can see, there's unit planners, there's term overviews by week. There's different ways to write out what you're planning on doing. Daily planners, if you like that, to create a schedule. Yearly field trip overviews. Then we have these monthly overviews where you can write down different things that are happening each month. And then just a little more here, different pages that you would get with this planner. This is a very popular one that I have. And then let's take a look at this kids visual schedule. This is another one of one of my best sellers. So if you have younger kids who need to know what's happening, when things are happening, you can get one of these. And then it comes with a whole bunch of different, different charts so you can rearrange and organize their day. So there's different ones. There's one little more compact and then there's ones that have just a little more space. And it's great for kids that need to know what's happening next. So all you would have to do is get some little Velcro little tabs, which I think you can pick up pretty readily and just put Velcro on the back and then you can rearrange these based on each day. Thanks for checking out my shop.